What's up, Internet? Reviewing today Deepcool's Castle 240EX and 360EX AIOs in their refreshed ARGB versions. Deepcool did send us these items for review, but they had no say in what we had to say about them. Let's start with the changes from the older models. In terms of performance, Deepcool claims that they've been able to cram 25% more of these wavy fins in the radiator space. And more fins is a good thing because that means there's more surface area for the heat to radiate from. Basically, we should expect better performance from these guys because of that increased surface area. Before we start with performance numbers, I just want to note that we've sold a lot of Deepcool AIOs over the years and they all come with Deepcool's anti-leak technology and we've never had a customer come back to complain that their Deepcool AIO leaked on them. So whatever voodoo or magic Deepcool is casting over their AIOs to make sure they don't leak, I can honestly say that it's working. Both of these guys do come with a 3-year manufacturer warranty as well. So onto the numbers. We installed both AIOs in our usual test bench, which is a Ryzen 3 3100, and we put this in a Fractal Design R6 case. Again, our usual cooling setup is where we run the CPU at 100% load at 100% fan speed for 30 minutes and then we note the highest temperature that the cooler reached. To torture the CPU, we used real bench. First up is the 240X and at 3.6 GHz, it reached a max temperature of 66 degrees. We then went on to overclock it to 4.2 GHz and it reached a maximum of 74 degrees. These are pretty solid numbers and they're in line with what we would expect from a 240mm RAD AIO. Good, nothing spectacular to be honest. They're decent, solid numbers. Given that the 240X was performing as expected, it was kind of disappointing that we couldn't reach the extreme overclock of 4.4 GHz. That's our usual test progression, 3.6 talk speed, OC to 4.2. And then if the cooler can handle it, we punch it all the way up to 4.4 GHz, which unfortunately we were never able to do with the 240X. We couldn't get a stable overclock with the 240mm AIO. A bit surprising since even Deepcool's AS500 Plus, uh, their excellent new air cooler, was able to bring us to the promised land of 4.4 GHz. And so we were a bit surprised that the 240X couldn't maintain a stable OC of 4.4. Although to be fair, not all of the coolers we tested can hit the 4.4 GHz mark. Some of those that have been able to hit that mark are Deepcool's AS500 Plus or Noctua's NHU12S Redux. Did its big brother, the 360X, do any better? At 3.6 GHz, the max temp we reached was... 53 degrees, so that's 13 degrees cooler than the 240X. At 4.2 GHz, we reached a max temperature of 63 degrees, which is 11 degrees cooler than the 240X. And finally, the 360X was able to bring us to the promised land of extreme overclock up to the max speed we've ever hit of 4.4 GHz and the max temp it reached was 73 degrees. And after doing those tests, the first thing that popped up to me at least was wow, 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 wow. 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 The performance gains using the 360mm RAD or specifically the 360X were quite significant over the smaller 240mm RAD. And I bring this up because usually most customers just go for a 240mm RAD. It's easier to fit in most cases, it's cheaper than the 360mm, and generally, we usually recommend that yeah, the 240mm is fine. But after seeing these numbers, at least we can now tell the customer that there is a significant performance gain if you do go for the larger radiator and specifically the Castle 360X. In general, Deepcool coolers have an excellent price to performance ratio and usually we recommend them to a variety of builders, the ones who don't want to spend too much but at the same time still want that sexy AIO goodness going on in their PC builds. And I wholeheartedly recommend these Deepcool AIOs for that purpose. Excellent price, performance is very good, and aesthetics are what you would expect from a good AIO. On aesthetics though, that's really my only major gripe with the ARGB versions is that they come with the CF120. These are the standard ARGB fans of Deepcool but they're one generation behind. Deepcool has come out with the sexier, and for me at least, they look really better because they have edges cut out of them so they have more light bleed, the CF120+. Plus. So a minor complaint of mine is that I wish that the these ARGB versions also came with the CF120+, Plus instead of the older CF120 models. 
But again, a very minor gripe and it doesn't take away from the fact that both of these AIOs are excellent quality. So I wish these two came with CF120 Plus fans, but other than that, good job Deepcool. Both of these AIOs are great contenders for aesthetics and performance without breaking the bank. Thanks for watching. And thank you to our top fans. Now for the namin to kupuan na to. De joke lang. Thank you to Leah Magnaye, Ian Meru, Richard Onkinko, ITX Addict, John Ruben Ocha, Christian Espinosa, and Rafael James. Thank you for supporting the channel.